And you're welcome to another episode of Analyze This. My name is Tunji Andrews, and with me on the show, as usual, is my beautiful co-host. Honey Ogundei. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Nigeria's emerging uh, technology sector. Um, I mean, basically, we've evolved over a number of years from when we used to do desktop publishing in those corner side stores, you know, business centers, to where we now have, you know, hubs in Lagos, Abuja. We have, you know, a, a, a very vast uh, technology uh, set, set up where people are making apps, all kinds of coding, you know, hackathons and all of that, even so much so that one of the biggest uh, technology names in the world, you know, was attracted to uh, Yaba to see what's really going on with Nigeria's uh, technology um, industry. So we're going to be talking about it on this show. And uh, we also have a, a tech expert who's going to be basically showing us where the money is and, you know, helping us understand the entry points and the things to look out for. You're a tech startup. Yes, yes, yes. So I run a tech startup called Fashwa. And also before that, I worked at Google in Nigeria and also uh, in McKinsey. So I've always kind of been in the technology world a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm super excited about this show. I'm really a geek at heart. Um, so we're going to be breaking it down today, really analyzing the Nigerian tech industry. I think one of the things that people don't get about technology is that there are so many different aspects to it, right? Um, so there's the software aspect, mm -hmm. uh, there's hardware, uh, there's social media. You have companies like Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. You also have ways that people use technology, which is tech-enabled businesses such as mine, um, who are selling on a technology platform or you even have businesses who are using technology in their innovative business model. So in Nigeria, we have companies using technology to solve problems around government transparency, recycling, um, teaching software, um, teaching education and health, even health, like life bank, delivering blood. So this is a super exciting uh, industry. I'm super excited to be part of it, but how, we need to break down like, how does the industry really work? Well, Where is the I, money? I, I mean, the, the thought for me was um, a couple of years ago, uh, yeah. when setting up my business, because we, we do a lot of managing data. So you're you know. like a rapper, but you also do data. <sighs> So yes, you, I, I'm sure you're all used to it now. Uh, she's always trying to throw shade, but I will, I will move past as a bigger man. Um, so uh, yes. <laughs> Anyways, um, in my business, we're trying to put together, you know, to, uh, infrastructure to be able to mm -hmm. manage the data we're collecting, and um, we were directed in a couple of places, and then they were talking about all kinds of solutions. And first of all, the, the lady was like, okay, we have to, we're going to host it remotely in somewhere that we'll not even know where it was. I was a bit worried about that at yeah. first. Then she said, we're going to deploy a software in the cloud wow. that was going to, you know, at that point, I realized how much I didn't know about technology and the, and the sector as a whole. But I mean, what scared me the most was the amount they were calling for the service. And you see, the, the worst part was I had to pay. You know, it was, it, was, it, it was a technology that you had to deploy for what I was doing. So, I mean, it's it, it kind of, you know, put at the back of my mind that someday I will have to plug into these technology parts to make money too because we can't just be giving them money without taking back. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a problem. It's a problem. I think things have <laughs> definitely moved on since your yeah. puppy these days. Uh, the world is now using oh. cloud software uh, and the internet <laughs> economy, especially in Africa and Nigeria, continues to grow. Which mm -hmm. is like, you know, it's a really exciting time because we're seeing people make money. But we're also seeing people lose incredible amounts of money trying to invest or build technology business. Even here in Nigeria, we're always talking about Amazon. Amazon was a loss to making company for nearly 16 years. And even despite having one of the largest e-commerce sites in the world. So like in America now, you know, it's like every $4 spent out of $10 goes to Amazon. It's like huge. Mm, this company yeah. was still making a loss. So I know like from an investor point of view, people are always like, how, if we invest in this company, will we ever get our money out? And should I even be looking at a tech company? And for, for people at home, if you have a tech startup as well, or you have a tech idea, how do I get the idea to come to life? I know mm -hmm. in my case, even before building my site, I was 409 almost two times because I didn't really have the knowledge of what I was trying to do. And also and didn't because you didn't use floppy disks. Yeah, and also before, because I was born on the internet. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's super exciting. We need to break some of these things down. We need to exactly. understand like where are the opportunities? How can we do it mm -hmm. better? Mm -hmm. So I'm excited that we have someone on the show today who knows all about this area. Um, he has been helping some of the best social innovative businesses come out of uh, Nigeria and Africa. His uh, uh, business is the first place that Mark Zuckerberg touched foot in, in Yaba, when really he arrived. I really need to find out how they did that, though. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. all need to know. So on the show today, we have with us Tunji Elesho. He has two Tunjis in one show. Um, he's the co-founder at CC Hub, 
and he's also the head of impact investing. So he decides where all the money goes. So today we're going to be breaking down with him. Welcome, Tinji. I, I think, Tinji, let's start with the fact that what exactly does CC Hub do? I mean, because I, I, it sounds like some sort of enterprise, space enterprise. What does it do? Okay. So in, in very simple terms, CC Hub is a platform. Um, and it's a platform where people who are looking to innovate to solve problems uh, find a home, uh, find the right resources, find the right partnerships, find the right environment in which they can get right. their innovations out and thrive, exactly. So people come with basic ideas and we work with them and support them, link them to all the various types of uh, environments they require to get those ideas to become you know, really exciting things that solve problems on the ground. Okay. I, I've, seen, I've seen two, I have two friends who've worked out of CCL okay. and um, mm. they basically told me how, you know, okay. it's as if when you're in CCL, money's just on the floor, you just pick it everywhere wow. and, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. I'm, I'm well, I'm, just I'm money rephrasing, on the I'm to rephrasing, me. I'm rephrasing, but literally that is what they said. Okay. I mean, that, well, I think what they really said was there were a lot of opportunities, mm. Right. Mm. you know, coming at them without them even yes. basically trying to, to yeah. get it. So, yeah. um, let, let's start, how, how do you, enter to this money space, you know, because I, I really need to understand. <laughs> when we started out, it was very clear for us that technology was going to be big. Um, we saw the fact that mobile phones were becoming more ubiquitous. Uh, and for us, it, the challenge was, if you had an idea, you wanted to get it going, where do you go to? And nothing like that existed. And so we were very clear that we wanted to build that kind of platform where when you think about an idea and you want to get started, you come to, uh, to our place. Um, and, and essentially, that's how we've evolved over the years, uh, where people who spot an idea or spot a challenge in society and are looking to address it using technology, whether it's enabled or you know software or hardware, you can come into this kind of environment. We go through a series of uh, interviews just to understand how that aligns with what we're trying to achieve. And if that's the case, then we bring you into the network. And with our teams, we then support you to, to get those ideas out, connect you with partners, connect you with clients. Um, and to a large extent, that's how people found a lot of value with being connected with the CC Hub. The fact that you could meet a lot of these really high profile clients who, who've got money uh, and are looking for you know, startups to solve those problems. Yeah. Uh, and, and it became almost a, a match made in heaven. Yeah. And I know like from my experience, and you know this because I probably cried out the phone to you a couple of times, fundraising for many tech startups is still going to be a huge bottleneck. Like, so what do you think, why do you think that, that's why the fact that we have lots of people that have money and we have lots of interesting startups in this space, it's still hard to sort of sometimes make that connection. So, so, so it's a couple of things. Um, I think primarily the, the local investor still doesn't understand technology. Um, and, and, you know, where you've got, you know, oil and gas, you've got real estate, you've got trading uh, that is doing it for you, it's going to be difficult to want to move part of your portfolio to that. Uh, the other side is we haven't really seen groundbreaking, innovative ideas that have come out and people have exited. Uh, because if someone is investing, is thinking, how do I get money out? And knowing that I'm going to put it in this black hole that, you know, goes on forever. And I, I've had all sorts of Silicon Valley type gist, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. It, it then becomes difficult to want to put it in because you're thinking, yeah. where is the out? And if you can't see the out, then it really, to them, doesn't make sense to go in. Um, which is kind of, kind of different from how you see it in the West. Um, yeah. People are doing it because they know that the markets are a lot more mature. Yeah. Um, internet penetration is a lot better. People appreciate the internet. Yes. Uh, here is still, again, I always say, it's still not a way of life uh, mm -hmm. for us here. So it's, it's really early days, uh, in as much as it's perhaps five, six years in the making, it's still really early days, this new wave of technology. Mm -hmm. And it will take seeing a few really standout performances and, and ideas yeah. who make money yeah. uh, to encourage a lot more people to want to dive in. As you know, we all, you know, every, once something looks like it's booming, everybody, everybody jumps yeah. in. So, yeah. And the thing, another thing I've noticed is yes. that, um, and I've seen a lot of people complain about the fact that um, uh, technology providers, yeah. in terms of the smaller ones, who okay. probably is just him and his laptop, yeah. tend to want to overthink the um, issue. Okay. So I probably tell him, I want this mug to be able to leave this table and come to my lips. And he's thinking, you know, okay, so when you touch it, then mm -hmm. make it cold and then make it hot. I said, no, just let it come and touch my lips. And so how have, has the hub been able to create, uh, or, or I mean, how have technology people been able mm -hmm. to, you know, marry with mm -hmm. proper business? Mm -hmm. You know, there's technology and then there's proper mm -hmm. business. How have they been able to do that? So I think it's, it's, it's about, you know, interpretation. Yeah. Um, a client wants something and his mind is really clear on what he wants. Uh, but if, it's, if the communication is not in a way that technologists can understand, then you would always have those kind of clashes. 
So <clears throat> I think one thing that we've been able to do is kind of be that bridge uh, without wanting to be a middleman because yeah. okay. uh, associated costs with being a middleman, mm -hmm. right? And it makes things a lot more expensive. So I think for us, it's about ensuring that we can deconstruct the brief in a way that technologists understand. understand. And of course, you know, as things progress, technologists will, I don't use the word catch on, but really be able to better interpret the kinds of needs of clients. Mm -hmm. And that way it bridges that gap. Um, I think some of the things that will really stand out and get technology sexy, for want of a better word, mm. is people being able to meet those needs and uh, cashing out. Mm -hmm. um, that way people begin to see it and go like, hmm, why not? I yeah, might as well true. you know, go yeah. into that. And that way it then helps to fund that long term, you know, long gestation period. My grandpa you know, started this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for those kinds of things to then catch on. But it needs to be really quick. A big company needs a solution, a small company can provide it, he it charges together. it an arm and a leg, boom, it cashes out, he can fund the next set of people. I think that, that will really get things kicking and, yeah. and help local investors really understand yeah. and appreciate technology. Yes. Yeah. So Mark Zuckerberg came to Nigeria. Yes. He touched his hand. <laughs> yes. Many times. <laughs> I saw a picture. Right? I was in my office, so I didn't, I didn't really get to do anything. Uh, and he also famously invested in Andela, so $25 million in yes. the Nigerian startup. So. Yes. Things are really exciting. If yes. the government has started to have a look in, and what are those tech people in Yaba mm. doing? Mm. The guys that wear mm. jeans and t-shirt. Mm. Do you think the government has a role to play in a sort of like our emerging tech space? Yes, I think so. I think um, very importantly, um, if you look at the West, right, and it's always good to look there and see what the history is like. A lot of what we're seeing now in terms of innovation has come from an R&D perspective mm. with the government funding. Okay. Uh, and the relationship between government and, and technology and corporates should be government funding the infrastructure, the R&D. Mm -hmm. And then corporates can then see value in investing dollars in there and they see the return on investment. And that way, once that happens, government can then tax it and, and everybody's happy. The balance of equation is really correct. Uh, so for, for me, that government has a really strong role to play, especially because in our environment, infrastructure doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. uh, broadband is still expensive. Internet um, is still very slow. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, so we need deep pockets with a very long-term long -term, objective, yeah. putting that money in, in the, with the understanding that once private sector sees the opportunities, it's their responsibility to piggy off those opportunities. And then you just sit back and collect your taxes. So, mm -hmm. so the government, we cannot scale, in my opinion, without the government. Um, but it then requires, I think what we've seen in terms of the balance of power, um, especially in the last two, three years, is the government is now seeing the opportunities as the private sector is showing it. And hopefully then are able to catch on and begin to play the role they should be playing. So for a young person, mm -hmm. you know, in school, coming mm -hmm. out of school, thinking, mm -hmm. I want to go into technology, what would you tell them to, what was that entry okay. uh, point? Or what do you even do? It's like, so you have mm -hmm. an idea yeah, now, I so mean, you're, you're maybe fresh out of uni, mm -hmm. you're confused, you're thinking about rapping, maybe mm -hmm. tech, uh, and you have this idea in your head, and you're wow. thinking, how can I make this idea go from like idea so to like you feel, you feel a big, how she does it, right? A big billion <laughs> yes, dollar company. How like so? If you're a young person, how do yes. you get started, and how do you make sure you don't get shafted? Because you know that mm. I always talk about these day mm. one investors. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's a couple of things. I think um, right now with the democratization of the internet, uh, yeah. it makes what does it that easy. mean? So it means that access to information is no longer guarded. Okay. The gatekeeper is gone. Okay, got it. Right? So you can sit down on your laptop with internet access and find the information for yourself. Mm -hmm. Unlike previously where you depended on someone passing that information to you. So I think what that has done is, is enable people to be able to, on their own, either with a mobile phone or a laptop or a desktop, you know, start, start mm -hmm. that process. Um, but then how do you then connect with the right kinds of resources? Because that's, that's almost always the, the game changer, yeah. especially yeah. in our markets. Um, is then being associated or connected with accelerators, with, with incubators, with you know mm. those kinds of entities, mm. co-working spaces that can house you and perhaps connect you, help you better refine those ideas mm. um, and then connect you. Um, people always say, oh, it's my idea, I don't want to share it. And yeah. What I typically tell people is, at the end of the day, you don't share it, it stays yes. with you and, and it goes. Um, mm -hmm. I'm of that opinion that execution is what really matters. Really matters. And perhaps the first or the second thing you do may not fly. Right, but what that does is it hones your skills and, and your ability keeps, to yeah. to get better at it. True, and, true. and once that big break comes, you know. And so when people want to send ideas, I'm like, if that's your whole billion dollar idea, please don't share it with me. <laughs> because, yeah, because I cannot. I'm not going to go execute it. But my role is to help you refine that and put it out in a way that 
you know, the audience would, yeah. would look And good. ideas are good, but it's also about execution. Yeah, right? it is yeah. about execution. Yeah. Lots of people can have the same ideas, but it's kind of how you go Exactly. I mean, I, 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 it's, it's just like the issue with Bitcoin. And, yes. you know, someone was asking me about it and I said, um, just the same way MySpace and High Five were Friendster were mm -hmm. out there before Facebook, mm -hmm. it's like they never existed, right? So be, I, was, I was telling people be careful about yeah. you know going into it because you don't know which one is going to stay. Yeah. And I think that's the way it's been for all sorts of technology uh, um, services, yeah. um, even computers. There were those first sets yes. that yes. are no longer there. Yes, you know <laughs> we don't want to call their name. So yeah. it's, it's it's still a growing. Industry. I think things move in cycles, yeah. Yeah. right? And, and if you look at our own evolution, uh, starting from the copycat generation or mm -hmm. those who were more or less, for want of a better word, contractors who yeah. served the bank, served the oil companies, mm -hmm. yeah. building bespoke solutions mm -hmm. and made a lot of money. True. So in the 90s, they did a lot of that. Yeah. Um, and then we then see this new wave, which is which coincided with the fact that information was readily available. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you then found the copycats, Facebook for student, Facebook for marketing, yeah. Facebook for yeah. blah, 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 blah. Those kinds of, were the kinds of ideas that were coming in. But now in the last two, three years, you're seeing a lot more thought put into that process. Mm -hmm. You're seeing people digging in and getting a lot more information and saying, mm -hmm. I've spotted this idea or this, this problem, and this mm -hmm. is how I think mm -hmm. with innovation, either in the business model mm -hmm. or in the application of technology. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the other thing I typically always talk about. A lot of what we're seeing now is more application of what already exists. Yeah. We're not seeing that deep, deep groundbreaking thoughts, yeah, software into, or hardware. Yeah. And it will take a bit of time. True. Because, again, True. you know, we're in a market where 180 million plus people are in jobs. So yeah. people need to literally, first and foremost, really Eat. get food on the table. True. And, yeah. True. and that means you're going to latch on to that wave. So we've seen e-commerce wave. We've seen logistics wave. We've we're seen, still waving. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's now a lot smaller and perhaps more niche now and more focused and more focused exactly yeah. so we'll see those waves and you see people taking advantage the more we see exits the more we see mm -hmm. people literally coming out and being on forbes and you know i sold my company i made i made you know 10 million i made 50 million i made 100 million selling it then for me that's like the trigger point where things would then explode yeah. so quickly before we go though i wanted to quickly ask about you know uh, small businesses mm. taking advantage of technology for their mm. businesses mm. uh from advertising mm. to basically mm. uh, making sure efficiency. Make sure they're online, like they <clears throat> exactly. have a website, yes. you know, a web you know? presence. Yeah. And, and um, it, it's, it's grown, right? But, yes. But what, what, what do you see the future of this being in terms of mm. how it will be able to help startups be mm. more efficient, reach their customers quicker? Mm. Uh, I think the, so, the social media wave yeah. um, <clears throat> has really changed the game. True. So I can sit down, create a Twitter account or Facebook account and start to reach out. So small businesses, I th in my opinion, need to work more with startups, especially mm -hmm. uh, things around inventory, things around sales, things it's because we need to digitize businesses. Exactly. And, when and you keep records and exactly. all of those things. When you digitize businesses, then it opens up a lot more opportunities. Sure. How do you reach more people? How do you make more money? But I think we're still at that very early stage where it's about digitizing and making sure your operations are tech driven or enabled yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that way you're not confined to a particular That's place yeah. and you're literally everywhere so social media started that wave but then it needs to get a lot deeper mm -hmm. where it's now very foundational structural for your business True. and that way you can then really literally mm -hmm. kick off yeah so i know that you're working on something which is really interesting this is mm -hmm. one of the things i love about cc hub like they stay innovating mm -hmm. so this summer you're flying yes. a bunch of people on a plane yes. in search of yes. money yeah. Wait. Tell us about that. Yeah. Okay. They're going on the plane. They're flying around. <laughs> so, so the wait, 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 wait. Inside the plane. They were just we are not going. going. We were yeah. No. Yeah. No. Why? Yeah. So, so it's called it's called pitch drive. Um, like like Honey said, you know, we're always thinking of really interesting, innovative mm -hmm. uh, ways to, to to be ahead of the game and to really support innovation in, in, on the continent. So we work, We talked with Google, um, and Google and ourselves are taking fifteen African entrepreneurs um, and startups at seed level. Again, I don't use jargon, but we're going on the tour of five cities in Europe. We're going to London, we're going to Amsterdam, we're going to Berlin, we're going to Zurich, and we're going to Paris. And the goal is to meet with investors in each of these cities, and the goal is to raise 20 million euros for the What's the, the criteria? 20 for million euros. Million. It can't be a wrap so, so we had, a, we had, we had a, a whole process last month where <laughs> we looked at companies that have you know, earned revenue in the last 12 months, companies that have done $100,000 in revenue uh, mm. minimum, uh, companies that have raised some level of equity or seed round yeah. or round before, uh, and companies that are solving real problems. Um, oh. It was a really competitive process um, across the entire continent, and mm -hmm. the goal is to 
we're going to have a boss. So, oh, so you've already started, so I can apply now. Yes, we have we've closed the application process. So we'll go from London, drive to Amsterdam, okay. to Berlin, you know, and, and hopefully it will be a really interesting summer where people can raise money. We want to yeah. showcase the best of African talent yeah. um, and, and open them up to European investors. Uh, mm. Because we believe that that way, when you crowd money in, then local investors then think, hmm, there's something, yeah, really there's, going, there's on something there. going on I might as well, sure. you know, chime in. Sure. So. That's kind of what we're looking to achieve. Well, That's really, really great. Totally, totally, totally impressed. I mean, for me, the government needs mm. to look at this. Already bringing in dollars well, into the country, you know? <laughs> I mean, if you if you check it, we were mm. talking about diversifying the economy, mm. yes. uh, revenue. This is another source creating of dollars, jobs. You know? Yes, creating so it's jobs. Beautiful. Yeah. Great job, guys. Great Thank job. you very much. Awesome. Thank you. Great to have yeah. you. Good to, have, good to be here. I'm just upset exactly. that I can't go with it's you. It's not for rappers. There'll be one next year when we go to the US. So. It's not for rappers. <laughs> For in tech enabled business, do not worry. That solve problems like <laughs> next year, next year, next year, we work on it. We go to City Hub. Next year, exactly. If you start now, we will be ready for next year. How to be summer. a rapper with technology? <laughs> yeah, why, why not? Yeah, we've seen rappers invest huge sums of money. Yeah, ra ra see, yeah, it's actually this rapper. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do know yeah. about that. Chameleon, yeah, yeah, I do know about that. Oh yeah, he's yeah. made lots of money from that. He's a huge investor now. He's a tech investor. Jay Z, yes. Yeah. Jay Z did spin left. See, yes. there is a Demon marriage Dash. between technology yeah. and rapping. Yeah. I think yeah. Tunji is about you second can't save yourself yeah, on this. She was trying to shade. You no, it's not right. a shade. This is you encouragement. I'm yeah. encouraging you to, so yeah. we can be a billionaire and go on a plane, fly away. Thank you. Morning. Let's go. We're good. Thank you very much, people. <laughs> Thank you so much, Shinji, for joining us and really helping us analyze the Nigerian and African tech industries. Really amazing to see the work that you're doing with startups like mine and others. Um, thank you for sharing your knowledge. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Great work you're doing. Great work. So if you want to discuss further on this topic or other topics, you can reach me at Honey Ogunde on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. Or you can slide in my DMs or you can leave me a comment. Or you can reach out to Tunji. Yes, you can reach out to me. Don't slide into my DMs. It's 2G Andrews, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, every, every, all Everywhere. of them, basically. And 2G, how can we learn more about you and the okay. work at CC Hub? Okay, so you can reach us uh, at CC Hub at CC underscore H-U-B. And you can reach me personally at Tunji Elisha. And you can reach us at Indani TV using the hashtag Analyze This. Till next time, guys, have a great week.